Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, we can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of the chief It's justice. a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a very, very, very <laughs> terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate. No two editions are alike, which is why I can't wait to see how today's episodes unfolds. On today's edition, Uche will be asking, what's love got to do with it? I'll leave you to imagine where she'll be going with that. Ekene hasn't had enough of xenophobia, or maybe she has. She'll be getting at the root of it and holding up the mirror to you and I. Chuka doesn't seem to be a fan of longevity in a certain context. He'll be reflecting on the life of Robert Mugabe. Seidu wonders if Nigerians are insane and deduces that at the very least we make bad guests. Find out more. But I'll be setting things in motion by addressing our deficient foundations in more ways than one. All will be revealed after this break. We repeatedly say that our youth are our future, and yet we consistently fail to plan for our future. A secure future built in apprenticeship. That's my advocacy for this week. A few years ago, I was building a house and had artisans on the site. I noticed a crooked wall, and I told the bricklayer that the wall was not straight. His response floored me. He told me that it was maybe because of where I was standing, and that if I should bend a little bit, bend my neck a little bit to the side, I will see that the wall was straight. Folks, we have a huge challenge with artisans and craftsmen. Right now, if you're building, you'll probably bring in skilled artisans from Togo, Benin, and as far as Ghana. Some even go as far as China and Turkey. So we have a problem. When the reprisal attack on so-called South African-owned businesses happened in Nigeria last week, we saw thousands of jobless young men and women who took the opportunity to loot shops and businesses especially at the Lekki Mall. And perhaps the biggest challenge faced by Nigeria today is rising youth unemployment, combined with the frightening figures of numbers of children who are out of school. And these numbers are steadily rising. To me, I, I think we're playing tag in a minefield. Nigeria needs a new direction towards a new economic and social model, which places young people at the nucleus of social economic growth. Just like nuclear fusion, the regenerative power of young people can never diminish. But there is a significant gap between the number of young people seeking work and the existing opportunities available to them. Indeed, without a source of income to meet their basic needs, young people join an accelerated pathway to poverty and crime. Clearly, not everyone can make it into the universities, but every young person deserves an opportunity at learning a skill and earning a living from it which is why we must launch a national apprenticeship scheme to provide certifiable training to our young men and women across various fields from carpentry, plumbing, electrical and mechanical works. And the list goes on. And also we need to focus attention on developing this apprenticeship program, which not only improves skills and aid job creation, it will also help to build character and other life skills. We have often talked about entrepreneurship, startups. You hear the jargon all the time. But very often, the value of apprenticeship is not as amplified. For example, the ecosystem of Imualu can be copied and improved upon. As apprenticeships help young adults achieve higher levels of qualifications and career prospects, the government should consider creating urgently a system under the leadership of perhaps the Ministry of Youth with help from finance, trade, and commerce to encourage companies and industries to take up apprentices. As it not only benefits the apprentice, but also the businesses Indeed, in the long run, it provides a pool of skilled workforce for the companies and for the economy at large. Now, a national apprenticeship system, uh, there's a similar one that's obtainable in India and indeed even in the UK. It should be a one-year program where companies are encouraged to sign up to train qualified young people with practical knowledge and skills required in their field of work, 
under well-developed training modules, leading to some kind of certification. Now, this is different, slightly different from the ITF, Industrial Training Fund um, uh, CWES program, which essentially focused on polytechnics and universities. The truth is that the vast majority of young people today are not within that catchment area. They're not in universities, they're not in polytechnics. So like in India and the UK, we need to find a program. And also in India and in the UK, apprentices are paid a small stipend, 50% of which may be reimbursable to the employer by the government at the end of the day. And the pool of apprentices is dwindling. And I'll share this story. A friend said to me recently how her carpenter at Taylor at different times complained that they've, been, they've had to spend longer time producing um, the materials because no one wants to be an apprentice anymore. The carpenter said that apprentices dropped out or didn't sign up because they preferred the quick returns from being an Okada rider and also doing Babai Jebu. So it's time to turn our teaming youth into raw materials for growth instead of seeing that demographic as a challenge. To achieve this requires new ways of thinking and that we must move from the traditional handouts we'd give to young people and focus on developing them and developing their future. <laughs> Which one is Babai Jebu? <laughs> the that's Gambit. 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 Oh, yeah. yes. 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 You know, I was, I was watching a movie um, recently, I still haven't finished, called Mokalik. I don't know if anyone has oh, watched yeah. it. Oh, yeah, I've seen it. It's Kuna fascinating Kuna because this guy, I, I like it. I yeah. love the cinematography. I love everything about where it's going. But essentially, this rich guy um, was not rich, but he's well to do. And he drops this boy off. And, you, you know, initially you're like, is this his son? And he's his son. He's dropped him off at uh, mechanics to learn the skills of being a mechanic, you know. And even one of the neighbors comes out like, did someone kidnap you? What are you doing here? But clearly the story is going somewhere. The boy is going to, I think, develop some character by being in that environment. Mm -hmm. And you can imagine all the other things. And I keep wondering sometimes, you know, you don't need to be um, children. Any, anyone's child would really benefit from being in an environment where they have to work. They have to, you know, um, it, because what comes across to me is that, um, what's the word, something in labor, dignity in labor. Dignity. Because you see those people there and you can see the old man that is passing on, they call him uh, um, Ajay something. Um, Ajay, there's a name anyway, they're, they're teasing, but he knows his stuff, he knows his stuff really well and he's able to pass it on and compare the car to the human body and he knows what he's saying, you know. So it's, it's really impressive mm. and that is the kind of thing that came to mind when you were talking yeah. about him all, you know, mm. a certain tradition of teaching people a skill and passing on to them that confidence to say, look, I know this better yeah. than they even compare themselves with people abroad who come and they are apparently more skilled than those people because they've put their heart into learning the work. So, mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm just agreeing with what you're saying and that really this is one way we can empower the youths. Um, we used to have technical colleges, you know, that cater, you know, to the needs of artisans where they undergo trainings. You know, all of those colleges just fizzled out. I, I know Yaba College of Technology in those mm, days used okay. to, you know, do things like this. And that's what you get from the Ghanaian artisans. Mm -hmm. And most of those people have been trained. And then most importantly, what you said, the dignity of labor. It's mm -hmm. very important that, you know, it's not all of us that be engineers or doctors. Mm -hmm. You know, you can still make a living from being a carpenter, but you should learn the trade and be paid fair wage for whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with yeah. a carpenter driving to his workplace, doing his thing and going back, you know? So that's the thing we have to realize that we need to do whatever it is we're doing, we need to get properly trained and qualified and they should be able to make a living off those kind of professions. Mm -hmm. That's what would encourage professionalism in those those fields. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I absolutely love your advocacy, Emeka, because um, <clears throat> We know the way the Nigerian economy is right now. Um, those of us with degrees and what have you, what, what has it done for us today? You know, absolutely nearly nothing, actually. So I think it's wonderful. I mean, yesterday I was watching the news and there was a graduate um, from actually one of the top universities, though I can't, not quite sure which one. And what is he doing? He's a trader. He's selling goods on Third Mainland Bridge because he can't get work. Most graduates are drivers and what have you. So I love the fact that you're raising this, but the only problem I have is that I have, um, I have a girl that lives with me and I wanted to train her. I wanted her to get a skill, like when she moves on from helping me take care of my child, you know, she'll have something. And, um, and I thought this apprentice uh, scheme would just be fantastic. She wants to do sewing. She wants to learn her fashion design and all of that. So I found a lady who does that and I, you know, approached her. 
only to hear that actually I have to pay this it's quite a huge amount of money you know you're thinking that you're giving them free labor they train this person this person will help them in their business but they're asking for a lot of money and not only just that they're saying you, you need to bring a, a carton of wine and a soft drink yes and soft drink and things like it's just something you just, you, yes, just for, <laughs> and I was shocked, and I, the whole thing threw me. I said, wow, I mean, so it's now big business to, <laughs> to even be an, uh, to be an apprentice. Yeah, yeah. well, the, you see, the thing is, um, some of the things uh, Mecca has mentioned, you know, directly, I've, I'm, I'm involved directly with them, like when he was talking about Suez and the polytechnics and universities, because I have people like that in my office, uh, and they come and go. Um, and then you talk about the construction industry because that's where a lot of apprenticeship is. That's, that's where you know it's failing. I know, it, I mean, you can talk about tailors and so on. And I think the truth about it is that um, craftsmanship is very difficult. Mm. It is very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. And we must understand that the Nigerian psyche now runs away from things that are difficult. I was going to say that. Why? And I, that's, that's, where, that's a deep-seated problem. Mm, cutting um, corners, get so rich quick. It's difficult. It's going to be a very difficult thing to crack, um, especially when you're doing it away from the university yeah. ones who are forced to do it anyway because you have to go out, do your ITF, yeah. come back. So if you don't do it, you don't come back, so you do it. Mm. But what about a guy who doesn't have to come Some back? Some don't to even anything? do it, they just so, sign that they've done it. Yes, mm. that, 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 that's very sad. Mm. But, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but that, you know, that's the problem. How do we get us I to think, work? Yeah, that's why I mentioned the, the Igbo. Mm, system immoral. because it's yeah. a form of um, it's community cap capital and I mean, I mean that's the basic foundation of, of the sharing economy mm, before yes. we the modern day IT oriented sharing economy mm -hmm. but yeah. craftsmanship it's, it's really yeah, yeah because I was going to just buttressing what he said you mm. know the, a lot of people have complained that even when you take on Nigerian apprentices they don't have mm -hmm. the mind to do the work, and which is why they prefer to take on people from Togo, Cameroon, yeah. because they will do it for a few days and then they want to steal your customer because they think you know mm. they know better than you but they haven't follow through on the training and so they, when they then try and set up on their own, they're doing shoddy work that is not really befitting of someone who yeah. has gone through the training. So they're increasing mediocrity. <laughs> <laughs> well, the solutions we speak of are within our reach. Um, next, Uche looks at the foundation of modern relationships after this break. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really. It's disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very terrible. Backfire. Very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. What's love got to do with it? Isn't it strange that I even have to ask? I got into a discussion with a neighbor of mine over the weekend with regards to relationships. She boldly declared that she couldn't date or marry a man who didn't have money. That she was looking for a man who would change her life like a Ned Woko. Well, for those of you that don't know who this fellow is, he is an ex-senator, I believe, who is married to a 21-year-old Regina Daniels, a Nollywood actress. A man who would pay her bills and take care of her. The lady in question is a law graduate, by the way. Abroad, such women are known as sugar babies. This is the reason Nigerian women are often called materialistic. This is not just peculiar to our women. There is an ever-increasing number of Nigerian men opting for this lifestyle. They only date wealthy women or have sugar mummies. Gone are the days when men took pride in being the protector and provider. Now they want to be kept by rich women who are only too willing to oblige. It seems love no longer has anything to do with who we date or marry. Money, on the other hand, does. As far as I'm concerned, those that partake in such relationships are nothing but prostitutes. Many marriages don't survive these days because they are based on money, not love. 
What we have now are people who are with each other for what they can get. And once that is no longer forthcoming, the relationship grinds to an immediate halt. What happened to building a life together? What happened to both contributing financially? I thought we women wanted equality. In what way does this advance the cause? What happened to love? It is time we stop looking to others to take care of us and our needs and instead dig deep to create our own wealth. Instead of wanting to enjoy the good life at someone else's expense and reap where we didn't sow, why don't we each develop ourselves to ensure we have something of value to bring to the relationship? Let love, not money, be the glue that binds our relationships together. Because love, as the saying goes, conquers all. Hmm. Really love of money. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well, Maybe, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, to be, oh. to be, to be quite, you know, I, I've always thought about this. To be quite <laughs> fair, it is absolutely difficult not to be, not to, not to be lured by money, uh, not to want money, not to want enjoyment. Mm. You know. So sometimes when I, <laughs> I mean, I can almost say that. Well, Uche, <laughs> I don't think. You yes, can advocate this that. all you want. Yeah, you this thing is not going anywhere. I'm on the other side. I'm going of to the start camp. like that. Yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah, that, that, I, I want to hear about ba it. Ba basically, mm. it, it's 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 it's, it's not practical. that it. It's an aphrodisiac. That's that's not, that's what money is. Money is an aphrodisiac. I forget no, but, but I, let me even. Ask. It's very attractive. The, the, the things people are seeking through mm. money. Mm. This is my advocacy, and this right. is why I'm very happy with what Uche is saying. Mm. You'll get it times twenty if love is in place. So mm. for example, you're seeking security. If somebody <laughs> loves you, believe it, you won't even have to say <laughs> anything. They'll be going over and above. Romantic. No, if somebody okay, loves no, no, no. Let me, let me, even, let me even make the point. If somebody point. loves you, they're already looking to give you more than what you mm -hmm. want. Be, uh, so it, it's just the means that may be constraining them. But make no mistake, once that person hits the jackpot, they'll go over and above. They're looking for how to impress you with money. <laughs> but if somebody, if you're doing it by contract, you wouldn't get trust by contract. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't get, you know, so that the certain things you, even when you have all the money, you'll still find that you have that vacuum. You know, so I can speak from experience and I, I sorry to use myself. I, I, I just have feel to say, free, feel you know, free. I feel that what has really made me the person I am is because I'm in a loving relationship. Mm -hmm. And that then allows that person to go. So a lot of times the person is going above and beyond and people are like, uh, they, they're looking at me like I'm a pampered person. But I know that the person's heart is to do anything they can. So I'm not having to beg for money. I'm not having to look for, I have access. I'm the, I call myself the chancellor of Exchequer because I handle all the accounts. Mm. Well, so there's trust you there. See, no. Because the she person knows me. She has an account. No, all the She's accounts. Even, even when I wasn't working, I handled all the accounts. <laughs> no, yeah. no, but I wasn't no, going no, to the- There was money. The, there was money in the first place. I wasn't going into yeah. the relationship. No, even when we were, we were, you know, I remember when we started off, we were sleeping in the living room of my mother-in-law's flat. Mm. So at night we bring out our mattress. So he didn't have, we didn't have he, we, he was doing you know whatever he could do and I was doing whatever I could do but we weren't marrying on the basis of if the money was in place mm -hmm. I know like even my wedding ring till today costs less than what people pay for transport but if someone gave me on a voucher and that's how we got married we're printing our own wedding invitation mm -hmm. things yes, on yes. our lap you know so we were we were really at, we started together like two children in a sense and you know so we were ready to go the distance money wasn't a prerequisite so I always feel sorry when people put money before love because you get all the things you want with money and that vacuum will still be there you mm. can't buy the things you really want with money that's that's my bottom line mm. I suppose mm. I, yeah look at mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. Yeah, I, so, 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 story so, is a romantic version no it is what the truth it, really is. is the reality it's a romantic is, version the reality is okay. I mean okay. I, really? look, oh, I, 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 so. I love love yeah I love <laughs> Love. 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 Yeah. Love. I love love. Yeah. But the reality today is, and, uh, and um, I'm just being real politic. The no, reality is that, you know, yeah. people are, you know, there's a lot of desperation. There's a lot of, um, let's put a scarcity of so many things within but the system. But will you let that affect your mindset? That scarcity um, mentality you advocated against? Yeah, so, so this is the thing, though. And, 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 and that's why I'm saying it, because this is what I see. Mm -hmm. I see the people who, uh, you know, in a huge sense of deprivation, and the fact that money anywhere in the world is an attractive itself, as, as, as Chuka said, is an aphrodisiac of some sort. Mm -hmm. and, and people from time in memory have been attracted to, to powerful men or women with, with access to money and power. It's a mirage. It's, it's, it just happens. It is a mirage. It is some sort of a mirage, but it provides cold comfort yeah. at the time that it but is available. Be those so there's those a those meme in, in, on social media where young boys, uh, young men in Abuja, and I'm young boys, 
dressed, nice starch kaftans, white Mercedes, mm -hmm. and he has his, his suitcase in the in the trunk. He has nothing, nowhere else but that nice. Car. That's, you might not have. That's his investment. Yeah, yeah, that's his investment. He has invested in to go and looking good. Somebody, Sugar looking good. Has a car. And he has a car, nice clean Mercedes mm -hmm. C three hundred. I think that's the model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's he makes himself available. Oh, that's yes, true. Because he wants to attract yes, 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 he makes himself available woman. at places. Mm -hmm. Well, if you see him, Gucci belt, smelling nice, like something. Smelling, invest in the things that yeah. and he will blow you know oh. thing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah i mean love is important in of a course. relationship but I, I i i believe that you know we are being coerced and you know influenced by yeah by, 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 oh, yeah, by the yeah. things yes um but for look my advice to any young person yeah um follow love say did you believe in love mm. i do believe in love but I think <laughs> love right, itself, it's, it's, um, it's relative, mm. you know, it's, um, it's, you can define it in so many, so many forms. You know, there's the um, butterfly love, you know, that, yeah, is, no, okay, not that. It's, it's not, love is sacrifice, love yes. is, is um, complete tolerance, love is like you shared the story, you shared mm. trusting 100% mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in this person good or bad and hoping that things will turn out well you know but for me uh with respect to what you share what mm. we're talking about um i would want to take it back to family values again how right. have you been raised okay what are those things that you hold are in? influencing your what choices? are the things influencing mm. you mm. now if you come from a home where just hypothetically saying now um a broken home or single parent home where there's so much pressure, you know, money wise and things like that, there's a tendency that you'd gravitate in that direction. You know, so there's so many influences that, mm -hmm. you know, are beyond you. Subtle, some, you know, and some that you just find like the society that we're in today, it's all about what you have. Mm -hmm. You know, even within families. Yeah. You know, the younger one that is wealthy is the one that's called to the table to take mm -hmm. decisions. You know, so it's okay. unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But true love as much as we'd like for it to trump, you know, money is still king. Oh my goodness. Oh, money is king. king. <laughs> <laughs> love is king. Oh my goodness. You just broke my heart. That's a great round like money that. Is <laughs> Well done, Sadie. I was waiting for somebody to no, but For me, it's like the opposite somebody of Shuka's advocacy. Because if you build up money, the foundation, that's why Nigeria is where it is. Yes. Because people still make money king. And I feel yeah. until you stop thinking like that, letting I'll external factors dictate your choices, mm -hmm. You're not, you're in good, no, good I think, nowhere. I, I think to some extent what people do mm. is that they, they, they do want love, yes. But the and love has the love has to be With has security. To be, yeah. Has to be um no let me um yeah, you'll be surprised. <laughs> um the love has to be on certain terms. So <sighs> you, you look for a certain kind of guy. That, 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 can, that you can love but has that security. Yeah, I mean, so there's nothing wrong with that? money. So you know what I'm I mean? There's some people, that I mean, they don't fall for on somebody. No, but you know, that's why they say for better, for worse. Mm. Those things you're calling security today, mm. you have to be ready to factor in the fact that if they are not there, well, you, you have still to... remain. Mm. Possibly. That's where the love no, then, no. that's right. where the love yeah. is the rule, yeah. the love yeah. test. Okay, yeah. guys. Well, I know we can continue to debate this forever. Right. When all is said and done, I'm inclined to believe that money me personally, not Seydu, <laughs> can't buy love. Yeah, right on, sister. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I can I speak to reversing a perverse phenomenon after the break. Stay tuned. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. Yeah. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very, terrible. Very, very <laughs> terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. If charity doesn't begin at home, then it's hard to see where we make progress. 
I'm going to be talking about xenophobia or Afrophobia. Either way, charity begins at home. Until re recently, the word xenophobia was little used in public discourse. So it's a testament to the efficacy of the social media grapevine that now the question would rather be who hasn't heard of it? xenophobia rather than the other way around. The aspect of the recent development that has me stuck in reflection and somberness is not the violence or even naked hatred of one human being for his fellow human being, as traumatic as that is to behold, but the fact that, as one South African lady termed it, it could be more accurately described as Afrophobia rather than Xenophobia. So, Xenophobia is described simply as a dislike or prejudice towards people from other countries. In the case of the recent developments in South Africa, what we've been observing is largely an aggressive and even violent rejection of African immigrants by black South Africans, hence the term Afrophobia by my South African friend to which many an African, and particularly Nigerian, respond with a befuddled expression and ask, but why would an African reject and kick out against a fellow African and brother in arms? The explanations only serve to deepen our befuddledness, if there's such a term. Apparently, the average working class South African feels that they have little in common with their fellow African, nor do they want to. They see themselves as a superior breed. However, we should not be surprised Xenophobia or the history of prejudice against the people with the view that one's nation is superior is as old as history itself. One write-up that charts xenophobia in the United States of America identifies that at one point or the other, this prejudice has been expressed or experienced against the African American, the English and Scottish Americans, the Chinese Americans, and so on. Like wheels in motion, the history of the human race seems destined to gravitate around ignorant and arrogant assertions of superiority and inferiority. The ugliness of it all is driven home when we're on the receiving end. But if we're honest, we have been in a position to practice it towards others, and many may even have succumbed to the temptation. Where Afrophobia is concerned, it becomes that much more complex because it would seem that in hating our fellow African, we're indeed projecting a hatred of ourselves. We're buying into the narrative that the African is the loser race, and this plays out in an inferiority complex. Our xenophile, or love for all things foreign, over our indigenous culture and identity. <laughs> what a tragedy. I say it's imperative that we learn to love and project a positive self-love for the African race. We must become Afrophiles. In the face of so much perverse hatred, more than ever, now is the time for charity to begin at home. What do you say, my so fellow? much needed <laughs> um, advocacy, absolutely. I mean, I, I really do think when uh, blacks are hating other blacks, it is like, it, it's an indictment on us. It makes us look really, really, really bad because like we're hating ourselves. And I never really, um, never really thought of it the way you put it, but now that you've, you've put it out there, it's like, wow, it's even worse than, and, than it appears. Now, the problem with um, this South African thing or this xenophobia thing is that it only ever really happens among um, the lower classes. The, the, the well-to-do and all don't have time for that. They're just sitting there watching us, you know, rip ourselves, well, I don't know, maybe I'm adding myself to the lower class right now, but, mm -hmm. you know, watching ourselves, you know, rip ourselves apart and what have you, which, which is, you know, it, it is like a game that they're playing using us as pawns. Now, if we learn to understand that and understand that this is a distraction that's being allowed by the South African government to de detract us from the state of their economy, you know, the lack of them providing resources and infrastructure and the things. I mean, South Africa has deteriorated. I've been going to South Africa regularly, like I think for the past, would I say five years or something. And the difference, you know, from the time I went the first time to now is, is just a mess, you know. So I, I think it's, it's good that we need to start to see ourselves as one. And one thing I know South African, black South Africans do not see themselves as the Africa. same as, yeah, they, they don't see themselves oh, yeah. as Africans. So, so you, you get that sentiment when um, I was there many years ago, you know, with my colleagues and uh, they would say, oh, uh, within the office, oh, we're going to Africa. Mm. <laughs> this is, this is a Africa. black South African colleague of mine mm -hmm. in the building. And he says, so is, is, yo, you're going to um, um, Cameroon or you're going to Ghana. Yeah, and he says yeah, he's yeah, going yeah, to Africa. Africa. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, yeah. and that narrative is pervasive mm. because I think that, again, I'm not 
um, going to blame entirely the uh, whole thing on apartheid, but it created a mindset. It created this wave where you know um, um, they felt that they were not part of Africa because the, Af the Africans, the people who were ruling the apartheid people, then you know created this thing that they were separate. And maybe because of the level of infrastructure achievement that they got at that, at that time, they felt that they were not like Africa. You know, I believe the power of the media, of movies, of mm -hmm. communication. We haven't, for example, we've had Nigeria spend 60 something billion during the anti apartheid movement. Really we've not had any story, yeah. mm -hmm. any documentary, even so any movie. Be aware of it, yeah. That the, 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 the normal South Africans would say, oh, oh really? It's nothing. Part of our story. They're part of our story. Mm -hmm. they, they don't know. They're not, they're, mm -hmm. And the politicians are. Politicians strive in ignorance. Mm -hmm. So if people are ignorant, it's better, exactly. for, them, better them. for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think when I was young, I, I, I thought about the name South Africa. And I, I, I often wondered who allowed them to name that place South Africa. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. And that comes to what you just said. America and South America, I think, is a clear sign that the whites want to take over, want to behave like they are the only Americans. So today mm. we say things like Americans. I hate that word when you're using it for people from the United States because they're just trying to take over a name and then they're South Americans. Okay. So <laughs> in our own case, like we had Africa and then we had South Africa, which was mm. a different continent from Africa. That's what it was in their mind, yeah. the, the, yeah. the, the, the white people. Now, they've, they, they were able to develop a country for themselves and have pockets of very good cities that mm. they could live in. The vast majority was just basically ghetto. And then you suddenly free the blacks. And they suddenly realize, oh, we own a country that has such a beautiful place as Cape Town, such a beautiful place as Pretoria. Mm. And they don't realize that, well, that's all you've got, actually. <laughs> Almost the rest of the country is, is, is just like Africa, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so they thought they were better than us. It, it, you know, it's, it's amazing that um, this thing, mm. if you've been following the trend, seems to happen every two years. Yes, it does. Yes. You know, and uh, I think there's so many things. There are undertones because um, the elections are fast approaching and they need to send a message. And they know that, you know, the guys there want foreigners out. And that's why you notice that there's that, that trend is gradually building because the government is using this to hide all the yeah, inefficiencies that yeah. we're talking about. You know, um, it's it's very unfortunate. Mm -hmm. But um, well, as part of what I was going to share is that yes, that problem is there, and this is as a result of so many years of appetite and you know warping their mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, but there's also that problem of do they really have genuine concerns? You know, we really have to talk about Absolutely. that as well. Yeah, you know, I, I still want the, to. The, the concerns are real. Are the foreigners really? Are they? The numbers of foreigners coming in, are they really doing the things they, they're, they're, saying, they're, they're yeah. saying they're doing? Yeah. Are they adding value to their society? Are they changing their way of life? But statistically, yeah, of statistically, less than there's a statistic in terms of crime uh, mm. perpetrated by, by non South Africans, mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's less than 2%. All oh, right, so 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 the, the average muggings, hijacks, mm. and, yeah, and right. break ins, and all kinds of things are done by the locals. Exactly. It's two percent. Yeah. Yeah. This is a this, this, uh, notion that they seem yeah. to claim that Nigerians brought drugs That's not true. to South Africa and we're the ones that are sustaining this drug no. opium, opium, opium like the, the wife epidemic. of the former, let's say rubbish. the NIA boss, the equivalent, mm -hmm. the wife of the former, um, I think his name is Sally, his wife was, was convicted in Brazil for, for, for drug dealing. Yeah, well, I, just before we round up, I just wanted to still maintain that it, if, as long as we're thinking they have a problem, we don't recognize that even Africans as a whole have, a, have this problem mm. with self-loathing. I agree. Yeah, we That's agree. Because, you know, the external factors and society and the trends have made us feel like to Where, be African yeah. is something low, low and to right. be not African. And so, you know, it, it fits the narrative that when you find yourself in a situation, you want to distance yourself. From fellow from Africans, fellow Africans. Yeah, and, and we need to be conscious of that even where we are oh, absolutely it will play out tomorrow you know we'll yeah. be driving some other people away or something may happen and just to be conscious of that narrative and not to be played with like that speaking truths to one another is one way of showing love it's time you showed us some love then time we heard some truths from your feedback on last week's complete edition Melissa Baudet says thank you guys it's like you're talking about my situation I live in Texas and I'm doing business with a Nigerian pastor, so-called. When I ask questions to, that relate to accountability, he has a way of making me feel that I'm rude because we're Nigerian. 
I am even scared to ask questions when I feel something is not right and working. Now I know better and I'll act accordingly. Okay, I'm glad you've been instructed. There are quite a few comments on Emeka's advocacy on the anchor to underdevelopment being rooted in tradition and culture. Omajali Monde says, wow, this is the biggest message I have had this year. <laughs> Charles Banwo says, I sincerely appreciate the advocate. Thank you guys for enlightening me with these conversations. Paula Lessard says, even the lady and the other guy close to the lady, that's myself and Seydu, are still afraid of their pastors. <laughs> Seydu, you're afraid of your pastor? <laughs> um, both of them are so scared to talk about the wrongs of the church and religion. I pity Nigeria and Africa. <laughs> Keep your comments coming in on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. Right, after the break, Chuka mourns what could be termed a late departure. <laughs> Stay tuned. Welcome to The Advocate a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible, terrible. Terrible. Terrible, terrible strategy. strategy. Yeah. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly, Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. You're watching The Advocate on Plus TV Africa. Could it be that time indeed does wait for some men? So, the sadness of overtime. There's a certain sadness when great people, almost mythical, are laid bare by time. That is Robert Mugabe. Time eventually runs out for those who do not get off at the right bus stop. It had become heart-wrenching to start to see photos of a silly-looking Mugabe, terribly old with jet-black dyed hair, ill-fitting suit, and that pocket-sized moustache. Comical, really. His infamous lady by his side. How could a freedom fighter like Mugabe find himself this way? Sleeping at conferences, inspecting the military guard, measured old age steps at a time, hunting down those with differing opinions, refusing to go. As a little boy in Benin City, I marveled at the African leaders of the time, Kaunda, Nyerere, Kenyatta. I was sure that the best of Africa lay with Eastern Africa. Heads of state in civilian garb, Back home, General Gawan was a showman with a beautiful wife, but still he was just not like those other men. Mugabe joined those other men, Joshua and Komo too. Dear God, why did you allow the demystification of Mugabe to happen? If he was not going to let go of leadership, why allow him 95 long years? Mm. You are reputed to have suggested three score and 10 years as adequate. <laughs> Thus. <laughs> <laughs> Allow me to finish his prayer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Com complete your prayer, then. <laughs> Thus, Mugabe would have gone on a terribly high note. Mm -hmm. You know, this is. Sorry. <laughs> why this is, why are you laughing? This is a serious matter. It is a serious, serious matter. matter. But, <laughs> but, you know, for me, I, 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 you know, I mean, I have mixed emotions with regards to um, Robert Mugabe. Um, you know, and like you said, Time is really the, the greatest arbiter. Time is mm. everything. Um, I just, I loved him. Mm. You know. Um, Why did you love him? Because I, he represented a well-educated African. He, he, I mean, he spoke without fear, without 
without trepidation. Exactly. And he spoke as a man. He, mm. you know, we have leaders who look at uh, a white person, okay, so and then they will they will it cower. They will, yeah. He didn't care who you were. Yeah. He, mm. he saw himself as a president, as a leader of his people. Yeah. Whether his people were poor or not was not the issue. He was a president, and he saw you. He would debate with you, and intellectually. I mean, he was just way ahead of his, mm. of his peers. And he did um, so many wonderful and, yeah, things. Yeah, and education, he did yeah. well. I mean, well if, you look at, yeah. if you look at education in, in, Zimbabwe. in Zimbabwe, they got 87% mm. um, 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 literacy, literacy rate, rate yeah. from almost um, less than 20%. So he did marvelous yeah. in, 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 in that regard. And he gave them all back their lands yeah. for free. And, and yeah. he started this, this land reform thing. So where did he uh, go wrong? I think where he went wrong was a combination of bad advice because at a point he also became a darling of the international of the of of the exactly. World Bank yeah. and IMF, okay. and they gave him wrong advice. Um, and then when he started the land reform, you had the Western countries come after him because he was taking land from pretty from very powerful white Zimbabweans who had links all the way to Downing Street. Correct. So they started this. Take it there. No, no, they started this huge yeah. campaign. Yeah. Um, uh, so many coups, and mm. I mean, to be honest, if you pull the levers of international. Um, de development and you can pretty much decide um, whether to want to mess up a country. I mean, I don't know if you read that thing. It sounds like a cliche, uh, the economic hitman. Mm -hmm. That, um, but they, they was a, it was well orchestrated, and I think he didn't. He should have left. Like Chuka said, I think he should have handed over to a much younger person mm -hmm. who will have been able to talk the talk yeah. and, and manage the rough edges. Having done yeah. well, didn't he want to do that? He wanted to hand over to his son or somebody like that, or his wife. I think at one point, his wife was showing... How old was he when he wanted to hand well, over to his son? He was already in his 80s or whatever, and that was part of the reason why the people were like, you know what, no we're more, done. we're not having this anymore. Um, like Emeka said, I, I really do like Mugabe, and I think it's a shame that we're going to remember this his end rather than what he really stood for um zimbabwe they, they needed a mugabe at the time we in fact africa needed a mugabe, a, a mugabe at the time i remember watching a video of this man and he was speaking to this white man and he was so bold and he wasn't you know and i loved that because at that time which african yeah. would have been able to do that sort of thing mm -hmm. plus he did a lot for his people he was a great you know like now the word nationalist is seen as a derogatory term or or a Very terrible negative, term but yeah. it's not actually negative he was a true nationalist he yeah. he was for his people and he worked for his people now why didn't mugabe just Step let I mean, I, go I, I, and i'm worried uh, sorry I'm I'm worried about the Rwanda president right now. He's doing a great job. I mean, I, I, I'm watching what he's doing. I'm liking what he's doing, but he's been there for an awful long time. Yeah. I think it's about time he too, yeah. you know, if he doesn't want to miss out on, you know. The glory. Yes, he, he needs I to think start thinking. Smarter man. So, I mean, I guess yeah. then my point really is to say, look, we should really push for it to be made compulsory that by the age of 65, when most people are retiring from regular service, okay. step yeah. down. Step down, go your way. I don't think you know, because it, I'm not I even it's sure. Diffi it's difficult to do that because. Uh, um, <laughs> no, why is it difficult? No, I. You, you, but that you know, will save you. You, you are assuming some legacy. kind of ageism. You begin to assume that the younger That's person will have some of it's, 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 it's to no, preserve it's, you and your integrity. No, it, so and it's, it's, it's to, because people. People are made to retire in regular yeah. work. Yeah, but that's, so that's, you can go into consultation. Just don't sit I at don't the helm. It, because power intoxicates. Leadership should not be, no, should power be intoxicates. To, to... No, power intoxicates. Time. I think it's, it's yeah. a safety measure for me. And I, I think that, you know, for me, the reason is not... Should we tell that to the Queen? No, she's not really doing it. No, but she's oh, a no, so, head now. But let me, no, let me even, let me let me even land the okay, point. Let me even land the point. Uh, because I haven't, I haven't finished uh, where I'm going. Okay, no, yeah. Yeah. can I land? So so let me, let me even get to... Should we tell her the guy in Dubai? Wait, Dubai. Now, wait yeah. let me get to where I'm going. Let me get to where I'm going. Because I, I, I can't really vouch for all these people who are there, about what systems <laughs> they have around them that are checking the, that impulse. But I really feel that it's not even time that was working against Mugabe so much as having those checks that restrain, constrain you, make you accountable to a certain system, you know, that keep you from getting carried away and thinking you're in dispensable and becoming a meg megalomaniac. Yeah. So I really feel that if you put those things in, in place in the first place, like you're worried about the guy in Rwanda, if you put those things in place, then there will be people who step up to you and say, okay, you know, it's time yeah. to step. Because I, I go back to the guy in Singapore, Lee, Lee Kuan Yen. He, he was in, active in, in government for a very long time, but he wasn't 
holding on. He was there in parliament, or the version of parliament, he was doing consultations, and he was clearly very committed to what he'd done, but he wasn't going to be the one managing it after a certain age, and that was safe to do. Mm. This is why we all respect Nelson Mandela. He made the statement, I will not stay beyond, and he didn't, he mm. kept his word, mm. for safety. You know, for safety, that's really how I, I see it. I, I honestly, I don't think, you know, um, the duration or age should really matter. You know, what I've, what I've noticed basically is all our strong leaders who have dared to face the authority have somehow ended up badly. Mm. Uh, Thomas Sankara, the other guy from Congo that was mm. killed, mm. you know. Uh, Mugabe fought for his people. Mm. And when he dared to challenge the authority, when he started claiming land, that was the biggest mistake he made. Is that a right. mistake? Well, or well that was his own doing in, in, yes. in quotes, yes. right? Yeah, quote. The narrative changed and, you know, everything started mm. working against. At mm. that time, he could not trust anybody to manage that crisis, you know, for him. The, the story started changing, the economic, um, where all the channels were blocked, you know. They knew that if they squeezed him, you know, his people would hate him and mm. everything started turning which is the same playbook they use for African countries mm. or leaders who don't, you know... Mm. Uh, but sorry, uh, are you saying that one person line. in the whole country, that one person is the only one fit to, to manage the a The man crisis? has started the journey. Like mm. the guy in Dubai, this was a desert with nothing. You should be grooming he someone as vision. you go along. He you would, can't assume would. that you'll Over be there time. forever. Over if you time. die, will the country be thrown well, into chaos? Well, it the, doesn't the, show the truth foresight. is, it doesn't matter who leads the country. As long as the they well-being of the people are fine. If you have jobs, your kids go to school and everybody is fine. You plan to be what does there it matter if it's there for hundred years? You need to plan and you know group. You know, that's the mentality that we've been we've been programmed, yeah. that I democracy look, I, or democratic I, I, value I, I, that I you might forever. serve for us. It doesn't matter. matter. I'll take what you're saying. It's pragmatic. That the fact that um, I don't really care how old the leader is, as long as the leader is delivering mm. value to his people. Um, but I think the, the, the long, and then I don't really care the longevity, how long the person stays, as long as there's, there's a system, like that you mentioned, the that provides. Because, like I said, um, the, 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 in the UK, they have a pretty good system that provides us checks and balances. And that's for a long why time. I'm against but it's longevity is that I feel like we're here, we are it in can Nigeria. Be abused. The oh, yes. younger generation are being held back. The more you stay there, the more these people don't visualize you know, themselves you know, in your me, place. Is, the more you the, stem their own desire look, the, to occupy. The, the, and I the, feel the there's younger something generation in Nigeria, when there, my generation forever. and the generation, you know, yeah, the, youth. I, um, I'm still quite youthful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think we're lazy. No, but I think no one hands power to you now. Mm. No one. Absolutely. Take it. Fight no, for it. The longer no, you no sit one there, said, the longer no, you, the, the, you, know, you have to take the mind of At the end of the day, and they, even in Nigeria, some of the so-called young people who have been given power, what have they done with it? If, but, if you're not looking behind way, Rwanda, you, then what I mean, are you doing the there? The people actually want him there. Yeah, for now. They want but him there. He's been there. In China, they've changed their system. The guy is going to be there forever. You're doing so well. But he could die any day now. So you die. I know what you're saying. What system is important? Is, is fine with it. There are checks and balances. Yeah, yeah but you must admit that no man needs. will live forever. So no, you need to of, have of people. Of course. That's why there's a system. That's over. why we're saying that create a system. Nobody lives forever, mm. you know, thankfully. You know, <laughs> but, 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 but have a system that, that will act as a check and balance. And I think that's what's more important. Well, <sighs> there's nothing like knowing when to make an exit. Honestly. Time for me to step aside. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, Seidu's advocacy touches on another form of overstaying our welcome. Up next. It may sound a little rude, but I want to ask, are we insane? Gradually, Nigerians are becoming the most hated people the world over, from US to the UK, from Ghana to Kenya, now it's South Africa. We have become a people identified with crimes and criminalities. Don't misunderstand me, please. Nigerians aren't the only ones committing crimes in diaspora, but some of our compatriots feel entitled. We believe we're smarter than our host. We call it hustling. Sadly, a number of us use the excuse of bad governance in Nigeria to rationalize the criminal activities of our compatriots. Nigerphobia is dangerously on the rise across the globe. How did we get here? What went wrong? What happened to Nigerians that were respected globally? How did we degenerate to such a level as we presently find ourselves? 
How did a people revert for their conquest in literature, sports, sciences, education, engineering, and so on, suddenly now become the nation of frosters, drug peddlers, and prostitution? Granted, we have a broken education system. There's no social safety net. Poverty is rampant. And these and many more societal ills have contributed greatly to this. But still, what has happened to our family values? It is time for introspection. We must reflect deeply and ask, or make a conscious effort to redeem our image as a people. We have to fix the family system, fix our broken education system, and also reorientate ourselves on how to be good visitors, migrants. Nigerians are good hosts, no doubt, but we must now learn how to be good guests. I think we're brilliant guests, quite frankly. I think <laughs> the problem is that we don't seem to do the things that we do abroad back home. For instance, Nigerians know how to obey traffic laws abroad. Yeah. Yes, they know how to conduct themselves. I mean, I, I'm talking about the vast majority of Nigerians right. that go abroad. Right. They, but when we come back to Nigeria, we won't queue. We'll queue abroad, we won't queue here. We, we try to grab everything we can get without actually putting in the work here. But over there, we're ready to go and be cleaning people's toilets and grafting and, and taking on how many jobs. You know, that, that's the problem I actually have with Nigerians, because we know how to behave well. We know to, how to do the right things, but we choose not to do it in our own backyard. Ooh, that's a different um, perspective. No, that's the perspective yeah. I, guess, I yeah, see. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, looking at I mean, the ones that I'm are spoiling at shoes abroad. for us. Yeah, yeah. What, what is yeah, happening? Yeah, no, but Impression unfortunately, the, it's a small number. It just seems like, it, I feel like all these things are always blown I, I, out of proportion. I, I, think, I don't think, it, you know, so, so, the proportion. Yeah. So for me, this is, this is what I, I find. I find that, um, you know, it's a, it's a problem home that we have at home mm. that we've amplified um, abroad. Um, look, there's, there's, an, uh, there's a Nigerian attitude that maybe mm -hmm. some of you, we have, mm -hmm. which is that we are perceived to be loud. Proud and arrogant. We're brash. We are full of ourselves. We're full of ourselves. Mm -hmm. And That's we right. are physically big. Aggressive and big. And, and, and we so drown we have, people yeah. out. So, we, you know, if you hear Nigerians having a conversation in an airport lounge, oh. you will yeah. just know. Yes, yeah, so that's We are true. loud, you know. Um, and I, and I, I, but just because I come from a media perspective, my late minister, Dora, we, we worked on something called rebranding Nigeria. Mm. Even if I, I didn't agree then with the concept, how it was um, yeah, implemented. Yeah, great nation of yeah. But, yeah. I, but I, I believe in, no, we in that we needed some kind of messaging mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. go out. Because, you know, if you, it, what is a Nigerian brand? How do you, how do, you you know, do we have any national strategy? Um, I, I, former minister that I worked with, Frank Winkler, then at the time we had the Heart of Africa campaign that he, he put forward with Emeka Chikelu, they tried to push that. Um, I think Rwanda is taking the heart of Africa thing now. They've, they've Absolutely, really, they've, yeah. They've, they've, and they're they're they running own with it, it and they're running with mm. it. But we, we haven't had a, a wholesome, consistent, um, strategic focus about what we, the messaging, how do we, how do we want people to see us? Because the, the world today is, full, is driven by brands. Absolutely. And we, we haven't <laughs> quite, and, and to be honest, our, our political leadership haven't done a tremendously Thank good you. job. You know, um, I remember a president going and speaking as if he was speaking to, to a local audience mm. that we are, right, right. We are yeah, a country lazy, of, um, yeah. I remember we were yes, lazy, now. or the, 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 the speech he made in, in the UK mm -hmm. when the uh, British Prime Minister then said something about fantastically corrupt, and he sort of echoed it. Mm. You know, it, it was as if... He disowning us. He, yeah, <laughs> he owned but he didn't understand the context. You know, mm. this is a man who maybe again, maybe because of his age, speaks freely. <laughs> speaks as if he's speaking to. Mm. Um, he doesn't. <laughs> children, he doesn't understand the context. Yes. You know, he, he's uh, not a man that's fully aware to. of the context. You can say this thing internally it's mm. like to the, us. The other room and becomes and a joke. And the consequences. Yeah. And, but there are consequences to Absolutely, that, yeah. especially when your president amplifies it. In fact, I saw an interview where the lady. Ask him, said, are you mm. not going to push back? He said, well, N Nigeria, yes, yeah. Nigeria. The lady but was, she was stunned. She was I like, want to no. definitely come in on yeah, this because point. Because that's, that's a huge thing. Mm. You, so when that person, it's like how the president of America now is, is, is taking the shine off 
how people see America. So leadership yeah, is that's extremely some people, important. By the way, not everybody. It's, 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 mm. it's, it's, yeah. it's, Let's not go there because we have things yeah. to talk about. <laughs> But I just wanted to make the point that, you know, when you're talking about, you know, the way we behave abroad, I think it's still a reflection of the hardship. Those who are behaving badly, you still have to take it to cognizance, the fact that they're coming from a country and the reason they've gone there in the first place, they're not going there as tourists. They're going there because they're forced to go there to graft and to hustle and they're trying to make money. So there's a certain pressure on them to make that money quick. You know, and, and the other day, it was just yesterday, actually, I met a guy who He's dressed normally in trousers and had a rucksack. So, and he walked next to me and he suddenly did the same thing. So I asked the guy next to me because I was suddenly surprised. What was he saying? Because the guy, if you see his presentation, is the kind of person you say, this is a dingba. You know, the guy is solidly built and doesn't look like he lacks for food. Mm -hmm. And he says he was begging. And I, I was shaken by that. I'm like, if people like this are begging, what will those who don't have an, a limb be doing? So you're really looking at a country that, the guy says, you have no idea the things I see because he travels around and people who are begging him for money, an elderly woman, he had to give her, you know, because things are worse out there than we appreciate because yeah. we're in our cars maybe or we're not maybe meeting these people on a mm -hmm. daily basis. So if people go out there and they're desperately seeking income, of course they're desperate to begin and, with. And, 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 and funny yeah. enough, ironically, Abiket Habiri, unless it was misquoted, 20, 2012, I read an article, she was saying it was the leadership that are, the, uh -huh. that are the reason why we're behaving the way. Yeah. So maybe she has changed her too really now. Of course, she's yeah. and, and she no, should but, change. But she's she's doing is. a different job. <laughs> but but the let way me say Nigeria this. Nigeria is seen yeah. abroad is because of our leadership. If mm. we had the kind of leadership that others, other countries respected, you know, first of all, they see how we go through our electoral process and they see how we elect mm. our leaders. They, you know, after yesterday's debacle as well, you know, where they now know that we have a president who allegedly we don't know whether has certificate or Up not. Now, yeah. Yes. Can you imagine how they're seeing us? Not only is he a 75 year old geriatric, he's mm. one without possibly a certificate. So we are not, our leadership is not helping us at all. We look bad because they look bad. But you know. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think this, yes, the leadership, we have problems with our leadership, you. yes. <laughs> but the problem, for instance, Hillbro in South Africa, is mm. it the leadership that went there and messed the whole city up? It is this the is leadership like, not this is, this controlling is like the Can I South Africa? Can I, can I say Nigeria to have taken over no, no. and have completely ruined so the place? No, the no, no, I, I disagree with you. I, 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 I've been in no. South Africa longer than that. Uh -uh. Hillbro was not destroyed by Nigerians. Yeah. Absolutely, that's not true. That message is no, it's not true. Absolutely not they've, true. They've Hillbro, even before place. Nigerians started going to, to Hillbro and living in Hillbro, it was abandoned. Mm -hmm. The white businesses abandoned Hillbro. It was it used to be the Lagos Island mm. of the business center. They abandoned it because of crime from the local people, from the black, because there were hostels that black people leaving, they were brought to come and work in the mines. So they lived in hostels. So crime became an issue. They ran and moved to Santon. Mm. Okay, yeah. So most of the buildings Before became the derelict and abandoned. Came. So it was a place of lo cheapest rent you could find and to say, still say you're living in Johannesburg. That was the place. Mm. And, but the other thing is that when people move out of their country and they're not documented, and you have to survive within a system. Mm. Then you have if you to have go no papers, you means. have to go to illegal. Yeah, yeah, That's the reality. Right. Yeah. So let's, let's just... Mm. Well, thank you. Thank you for yeah. that. Without regular assessment, we're bound to unknowingly step on one another's toes. As always, it's been a stimulating session. The conversation continues on our social media platform on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, Hashtag Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe on our YouTube channels, Plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time, keep advocating for a better society. Bye bye. Bye bye. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. So the moment impressed. you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Really. It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very terrible. Like <laughs> terrible strategy. And because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, 
the, the news. Yeah.